Seven of the last ten winners at Doral had a share of the lead at the 36 hole mark. Adam Scott has never won in consecutive weeks on the PGA Tour. He is halfway home to doing just that. Eight birdies on the day, including this one at number two for Adam Scott, a sparkling 66. Also in the hunt, former world number one Rory McIlroy. Left hand low for a second consecutive day. And how about 10 fewer putts today than yesterday. Three fewer than anyone else in the field. A 65 for Rory ties his career low at Doral. We're at the halfway mark of the WGC Cadillac Championship and we're on the air. Golf Central. Brought to you by Titleist. What a day it was at Trump National Doral. The cream once again rising to the top. As most WGC events give you, it is a fantastic leaderboard. Ryan Burr, along with former PGA Tour winner Brandel Chamberlain, former number one player in the world, David Duvall. And we've heard about the course redesign, but it's the same old cast of characters, Brandel, <laughs> that are dominating this golf tournament. Well, what a day it was. Adam Scott was 66, Rory McIlroy was 65, Dustin Johnson was 64. And you're right, they meant to rain in this golf course, or they were said to have rained in this golf course to some extent for the Bombers. But right at the top, three players tied per second or better are three of the longest hitters in golf. If you only saw the 16th hole today, which was 308 yards over the bunker, 314 yards to the hole, there were only three players that hit that green today. Two of them were Dustin Johnson and Adam Scott and Roy Mac Mac McElroy drove it in the back bunker. Uh, the golf course certainly uh, is power prejudice, but uh, all in all, uh, it's not just power. It's everything else these guys did. We're going to talk about it throughout the show, but uh, terrific day for all the three of those players. Yeah, I think you know, everybody kind of needs to catch their breath with everything that was going on today. It looked like Phil Mickelson was going to run away with everything, and then all of a sudden here comes Dustin Johnson, Adam Scott. Rory McIlroy, uh, it is it is an, an impressive leaderboard to say the least. Uh, power is always a good thing, you know, and it does. I, I, I can think of very few golf courses where you can rein it in. I mean, if you're hit, if you're a long hitter and you're hitting a straight brandle, you always have a huge advantage. And then you get on a golf course like this. I don't care what you do to it. It's a big golf course, and if the big hitters are hitting it good and hitting it straight, they have a huge advantage, and they're showing it halfway through. Last week, Adam Scott picked up his 12th career PGA Tour win. He is halfway home to number 13. Let's show you the action from Adam Scott. Consecutive weeks now, he's playing exceptional golf after bogey at three. Here he is at six. Well, this was uh, just a combination of everything. Uh, great drives, great iron shots, and just a great day on the greens. Ironic, a year ago is when he came back with this claw putter right here at the WGC Cadillac. Yeah, you see him here putting it downhill, showing exceptional touch with the speed of these greens, just outside, inside of 10 feet, making birdie. And you can tell by how hard he swings at this short iron to the 15th that he had the perfect number. It's not often you get the perfect number, but he left himself a very easy putt to miss low above and to the right of this hole, spot on speed and line. And for a while we talked about Adam Scott just having to be average because with the putter because the rest of his game was so spectacular and here we see a little bit of that. This is just exceptional. Beautiful drive here on the 16th, just pushing it way up in the air, able to cover the rough, land it on the green and stop it. Following his birdie on 15, he's got a 30-footer for eagle on 16, he two putt and make birdie. Hit it so high and here he is at 17, his second. Yeah, this is just a cool sawed off wedge shot similar in some aspects to the one he hit at the 12th when you could drive it that far and you got the off speed pitch coming into the greens uh, it makes this game a whole lot easier so 12 career wins that is the most among players under the age of 40 remember tiger and of course phil and jim they're all over 40 so it is adam scott right now with 12 as he is 35 years of age and more interesting you look at him now the three consecutive PGA Tour starts seventh or better after 36 holes for a third consecutive PGA Tour start. Todd Lewis spoke with our leader. Thank you Adam Scott. It's a game will travel an hour and a half south here to Doral. This golf course is dangerous with all kinds of problems out there. How were you able to successfully attack today? Well, I somewhat followed DJ's lead. He played a great round of golf, and sometimes when that happens and you're playing well enough, you can 
follow the leader a little bit and uh, my game was in good shape and I had to take advantage. I saw all the top players uh, on that leaderboard having good rounds so I had to try and keep pace and I managed to stay just out in front. Does that motivate you a little bit when you see the greats in the game on that first page of the leaderboard with yourself? Well, absolutely. That's what you want to be involved in. That's why I practice and that's why I'm out here. And uh, I think we're in for a hell of a weekend. I hope my game holds up another couple of days and I can be in the mix. Final thing, let's talk about the weekend. You've won all over the world. You've had 36 hole leads many times in your career. Does it feel a bit different going into the weekend with the lead considering you just won five days ago? I'm probably a little more relaxed this week leading going into the weekend than if I hadn't won last week, but 36 holes is uh, 36 hole lead doesn't mean that much unless it's by about 10 so uh, <laughs> you know they're right it, it, I could tee off tomorrow and not be leading and uh, you know that's I'm just gonna have to play a good couple of days and and try and keep moving in the right direction while the conditions uh, allowing us to well done today we'll see you on Saturday Adam thanks mate and talking about that 36 hole lead, it's the first time he's had the 36 hole lead on the PGA Tour since the 2014 Barclays, and he's done it by taking advantage of the par fives. Yeah, in 2013, nobody better. 2015, again, the changes happened right after 2013. Supposedly, this golf course got a little tougher, and certainly it did on the par fives, but only one player better last year in 2015. I always look at the par fives because it incorporates every facet of the game. If you've been watching Adam Scott, he started yesterday on the 10th hole, hit a beautiful drive in an iron shot or a 280 yard second shot and converted for Eagle today. Well, you know, he wasn't able to get to the first green in two, but there are is so many facets of his game to admire. And this one has come around. Uh, we talked about all he needs to be is average on the greens to dominate on the PGA Tour. Well, he is a heck of a lot better than average. And again, I alluded to this shot just a little while ago. Missed the green to the right with his second shot at the par 5, 12. Cut the legs out from underneath one. that one. It had been very easy for him to get a little too aggressive, come up short. But uh, it's interesting if you talk about his 36 hole leads, you just alluded to it. The last one he had was at Barclays. He shot 75 on Saturday. Previous to that, he had the 36 hole lead at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Uh, he eventually shot 76 on Sunday. Before that, he had two 36 hole leads in 2011, and he struggled uh, to the extent that I think he was struggling or average on the greens. It certainly doesn't help his cause on the weekend. And looking at uh, the combination of how good he is from tee to green and what he's doing on the greens, he's a little different man than the man who was leading uh, those tournaments a couple of years ago at the halfway it, mark. Yeah, entirely different player, really. Um, you know, uh, the putter is showing to be a, a weapon now, uh, uh, not a hindrance, uh, you know, and that frees you up everywhere else. You, you can sh see the shot on into the 12th when, when he had hit it a little bit right and a little bit short, and that was not an easy golf shot. He had to hoist it up over the bunker, out of the rough, got to sit down, but the freedom that comes from knowing you're putting well and you're making putts that frees you up all the way back to the tee, and you're seeing that right now. You saw it, how he played in Los Angeles. You saw how he played at Honda. You saw how he's going through 36 holes here. You know, the, the rejuvenation of Adam Scott might be in full, in, in full bloom right now. And you could see even in the interview with Todd, just mm -hmm. looking in his eyes, the confidence not only beaming, but how much fun he's having, talking about this is going to be a hell of a weekend. He's excited to be playing with now this new generation of these great players that he's a part of. He really has adjusted par. I mean, par is 72, but on a golf course where there's four par fives, he leads the PGA Tour in par five scoring average with a mind-boggling 4.3 scoring average. Uh, essentially turning a 72 hole or a par 72 golf course into a par 69. And once again, he says don't judge his putting until <laughs> April. So March looks pretty good, but we'll hold off at him until April and see if you can get just a little bit better. If you can, uh, he's going to be one of the favorites for sure to put on a second green jacket. Let's go to the guy that uh, wants the green jacket for sure, the only major to elude him. That is Rory McIlroy. The putting was the story on Thursday, 30 in all, and different story on Friday. Yeah, there were early signs that uh, he was a different man. Just a beautiful stroke at the fifth to save his par, or excuse me, to make birdie. And uh, this was quite a run through here. Really was a great putt there. Uh, the story actually started early in the week. Uh, him, him, him making it well known that he was going to go left hand low, cross handed, if you will. Here he is from the seventh, hitting the second shot in just over 160 yards. We talk about how great he hits the golf ball from tee to green, virtually day in and day out. You can uh, turn this. Uh,
putting into, we talk about average, but he was by far better than average. You'd make birdie there, and you see him hitting out of the bunker here. And he had struggled out of the bunkers for most of this year, I think due in large part to the fact that he was struggling on the greens, but a magnificent short-sided bunker shot at the eighth, and that was his fourth birdie in a row. And I correct myself, 33 putts on Thursday, 10 fewer today, 23 in all. That is three better than anyone else in the field. And that, another birdie, two shots back at six under. Here he is at 15. Yeah, he's making them from short distance. He's making them from long distance today. And you notice they're, they're really perfect speeds. Uh, yesterday, he, he alluded to how he was struggling with speed, leaving them short today. Not the case at all. I seen on the cake at 18. Well, yes, yesterday he finished uh, with a very disappointing double bogey uh, at the ninth. And today, what a way to cap. Just an extraordinary day. So we compare round one and round two, and they are startling, startling, especially between five and ten feet. That's where his struggles were yesterday, just giving up shots to the field. Conversely, today, he did not give up any. Six for six between five and ten feet. Rory talking left-hand low after his round. It's funny. I, I, I've been planning around, I've been playing, playing it around in my head a little bit um, about making the switch. and. The one thing that I was sort of worried about was the McElroy copying speed. That was my big thing. But that's that was the whole thing for me was was that you know. But um, it's felt really comfortable. It really has. Um, as I said, I'd done it before my rookie year on the European Tour in 2008, and um, yeah, I've 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 hit a lot of putts in practice with my left hand only, and I feel like just having that left hand lower. You know, it keeps that feeling, but with the right hand going on there, just, you know, it's more of a guide than anything else. So um, I don't think it takes that much courage. I mean, you know, I, it, you know, in my mind, it, it couldn't really have gotten any worse. So, you know, why not make a change? And, um, you know, the change is feeling very comfortable at the minute. And, and as I said at the start of the week, I'm, I'm willing to stick with it for, for as, as long as I can. Are you surprised at how quickly the results have come, even though you just took a couple of rounds um, in? Not necessarily because it has felt so good in practice, and, and I've always said there there should be zero difference between the the practice green and um, out there on the course. Um, you know, you're hitting putts at the, you know, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, obviously the circumstances are slightly different, but you know, if you break it down to the simplest form, a putt on the practice green is the same as a putt on the course. So it, you know, and I, I've seen improvements on the on the putting green. So it's it's nice to see those improvements translate onto the golf course. Is there a difference today, walking off this golf course, yesterday you had over 30 putts, and today only 23. The emotions that you have now after making this change? Uh, yeah, um, I don't, you know, like even though I didn't, you know, hole as many putts yesterday, I, I, I didn't doubt what I was doing for one second. I knew that this was the right way forward for me, and... Um, but of course, emotions are slightly different, you know, coming off the course and shooting seven under to, you know, doubling the last last night and, and shooting one under it's a bit different but um, you know very comfortable with where it is and very happy with where it is and um, you know it was nice to make that putt on the last because you know I had great chances on 16 and 17 to make birdies and you know I saw Adam got the 10 under par after 17 and I I, I really wanted to, to make that putt on 18 just to try and stay with him going into the weekend so you know it was a, a great putt to finish with and obviously gives me a lot of confidence going in going into the weekend.